Okay. This is my, just a word of warning, this is my first video ever of really any length and it will probably be my first one to ever put on YouTube if it comes out halfway decent. And I apologize, uh, getting over a cold, so I sound out of breath. It's just from all the coughing I've been doing. But being sick and watching some of the stuff on YouTube, nothing else to do. I looked up some old black powder guns and I saw some people doing some things that I thought was a little bit disturbing. So I kind of go over maybe some some better procedures on things. Uh, get a little history. I got uh, my first black powder rifle as a kit when I was about 14, 15 for Christmas. And uh, that's this one here. It's made by Ultra High and it's made in Japan. You know, it's not the best craftsmanship. I I was just starting out doing this, my first gun ever. But it shoots pretty good. And uh, so anyway, um, Looking at a few other things, I've got a uh, 45 pistol. This is my 45 uh, Kentucky style rifle and my 50 caliber uh, mountain hawking rifle. People call it different things. It's it's really, I guess, more of a mountain rifle. It's a little shorter. Uh, it's made by CVA, as is the pistol. And uh, one of the comments I've heard some people making is about what loads to put in them. And particularly the pistol kind of disturbed me. And in the, my second kit that I put together, the CVA rifle came a booklet of uh, pretty good basic information. Uh, you know, this is published back in the late 70s, uh, before these modern black powder guns. And it's for people that really didn't know anything about black powder, in my opinion. And uh, so it goes over some pretty good details. And one of the things that listed here is, is your loads to put in. And something I saw people saying, well, if it's 45 caliber, you start out with 45 grains of, of powder. And, you know, there's different types of powder. There's Pyrex, uh, which I guess I'm pronouncing that right, which is, uh, I think, all you can get now. I don't know if you can get black powder now. I still have some from back in the early 80s that I occasionally use. I do like it better but it is harder to clean. Um, anyway, back to the load factor. It specifically says in my book for my CVA pistol that the, the load should be about half of the caliber. So if I've got a 45 pistol, I actually should, should be using around 25 grains of powder, you know, and I, I think it shows a max load in here, but the people that are putting 50 grains in here of 2F powder, I feel really kind of run a risk of, of hurting themselves. You know, maybe some of the Thompson Centers or other brands, but uh, the CVA book, if you can find it, uh, I think is a lot better information. But I, I've loaded 35 grains in this without any problem. I, it's no benefit to it. I actually get better uh, groupings with uh, around 30 grains in this. And I do, just where everybody knows, I shoot round balls, and the reason I shoot the round balls is because these are all three slow twist barrels. They're all rifled, but they're all slow twist. Uh, Thompson Center uh, makes a fast twist, which shoots the, the bullets uh, much better, and uh, I bought these Buffalo bullets, which I really was excited about. They're soft, they're hollow point, and... They're 385 grain, 50 caliber bullets. And the the deal is, is I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with these out of my 50 caliber standing next to the barn, I don't think. It just just doesn't do it. But with a with the round ball at 100 yards, uh, probably my vision is more of the problem. Uh, I feel like pretty comfortable, not a problem taking a deer. Uh, 75 yards is for sure uh, capable so all three of these I've tried the bullets and they just in this particular twist of the barrel uh, wasn't wasn't worth it but the round balls do really good um, a lot of that again is the factor of the twist of your barrel is going to dictate uh, 
what kind of uh, projectile to put in it is, is better. Um, all these are, I use a patch, I use the same patch in all of them. Um, one, you know, and these guns are not that finicky, but sometimes you find little uh, tricks to them. Uh, each one, sometimes all of them that help. Um, when I shoot a patch, just out of the, just, just give you an example, uh, if I should take a, a factory patch and, and I, I don't even know the thickness it's been so uh, long since I actually bought any. I just had a bunch of these left over. But when I, I take the patch, um, I'll actually stretch the patch out about four times. You know, I pull one way and then the other. I'll pull real hard. It just seems like kind of stretching the fibers helps a little bit uh, in the accuracy. Uh, but, you know, it may be different for somebody else's gun. If you're using uh, console bullets, you know, you, you don't have to use the patch. And it wouldn't even be a, a factor then. The other thing I, I noticed is people learn, want to know how to load the pistol, having problems with it. Because unlike a, a rifle, you can't set it up. It wants to rock over. And and it is more difficult, that's for sure. Um, but one thing that really helps is this ball starter. Um, it's got a little indention here. I don't know what you call it, um, that helps seat the ball for the first time that you're putting it in. Um, the other thing, and then you have another two to three inch that are different uh, lengths on these, and that helps get the, it going in a little bit farther. Then you use your main rod to uh, seat the ball well. And one of the things also is a little tip that I learned back when I first started shooting from another person is the very first time you load your gun, um, take your rod and uh, that's where a wood rod is more helpful is that you mark your rod when the bullets fully seated in in other words if you take your rod put your projectile in sorry it's a little dark here and you seat your ball all the way in take a knife screwdriver or something and scribe right here on your ramrod and one of the things that will help you do is when, that way when you know you're seated the ball correctly that, that you're all the way down and that you're not got a gap in your powder the other thing that will help you do is if for some reason say you didn't unload your gun last time and you want to see if it's loaded or not real quickly you can run the rod in there and say hey you know you got to the mark you're probably okay um, but if it's been very long you're not sure at all i would uh try taking the nipple out and blowing from the nipple through and see if you're getting air through uh anything to make sure that you're getting airflow through so it's not uh got the barrel clogged with anything that might be uh some type of load in it also if you uh, keeps you from double loading it you know putting another charge on top of a charge it'll help that way and that's really my main concern and the reason why I did it. The other thing you'll notice here is that this rod is longer than the barrel. And the reason I do that is because when I built my first one and loading and unloading it all the time, um, it's kind of hard on that Kentucky uh, to reach the, the rod. Uh, you know, the rod was designed lighting's horrible the rod is designed to come flush here and there's not much gap to anything to reach and uh, so I started making my rods uh, slightly longer to give me something to grab a, a hold of and when I'm you know reloading uh, a lot then I don't uh, even leave the, put the rod back in I just leave it on the table while I'm at you know the shooting range um, the other thing that um, I just want to go over is uh, the the 45 pistol. People talking about hunting or whatever, and I've I've thought about hunting with it. Um, this particular gun, the trigger is so tight, and I've never had the trigger worked on because I didn't care to. Um, the accuracy in it is really pretty pretty bad. Uh, I feel like if it had good triggers, uh, and maybe if I was a better shot, it, the groupings would be better. Uh, but I. As far as killing, I don't know, uh, Texas size, smaller deer, uh, probably, but I 
some hunting experience with some of my more modern, uh, I hunt with a 45 long coat that I hand load. I, I'd really skeptical if this would do it. I mean, you certainly could kill it, but you might be better off hitting it on the head with it because it's a pretty heavy gun. Um, my 45, on the other hand, uh, rifle, uh, when I first got it, everybody said, well, it's a squirrel gun. Um, if you hit the squirrel with this, uh, you wouldn't have to worry about cleaning it. Uh, you might have a hard time finding it. Um, it's certainly capable of uh, taking down a, a deer. I don't know if I go any much bigger than that, uh, but a, a good-sized white-tailed deer should be no problem. Um, my 50 caliber, uh, I really hunt with more. Um, I've, I'm more accurate with it. It's got double set triggers on it. It's uh, got better sights on it. Um, one of the things I want to quickly go over is that um, when I first started shooting, uh, I was shooting at targets up on trees. And one of the things I noticed, no matter if I was shooting my 243, my 30-06, 270s, um, any of the more modern guns, 30-30, if I hit the side of the tree or even fairly towards the, the edge of the tree, you know, maybe an inch or two, um, shooting oak trees, cedar trees, uh, pine trees mostly, uh, the bullets would deflect. Uh, the b round ball on these never once deflected. Uh, in fact, they almost, every one of them would mushroom. Seems like they kind of conform uh, better and spread out. I, I never had one break in half or anything. It's almost always a uniform mushroom shape. These are soft lead bullets. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But um, I, I think they would do just fine on as far as penetration. is anything you're going to get with uh, the velocities that you're getting anyway. So I think for the slower velocities, these round balls really are much better than what maybe they're giving credit for. Um, the, as far as accuracy, um, you know, my dad was a, a better shot than I, and he shot my, uh, 45 a few times and, uh, really showed me what it could do. Uh, it's 75 yards. We used to have those old paper oil cans and, uh, he could center punch those oil cans at 75 yards with these open sights, uh, without any problem. Uh, I have to use the 50 caliber with the set trigger to kind of get that, that accuracy, but, the other thing um, I just want to quickly point out, my first gun, I did all the woodwork, and I took the barrel up and had it professionally um, done. Uh, it came, you know, silver or unfinished, and I had it blued. And uh, it's a very good finish. Um, I really like it. It's durable. Haven't any problems. Uh, I did it also on my, on my pistol, and I wish I wouldn't have. And the reason why, because I did this one myself. Uh, I hand blued it in my, in my garage. And it looks more realistic. Um, it is held up just as well as the other. And uh, I just think it's more authentic looking. Uh, my pistol, I wish would look a little more authentic. But um, it's just not very well. And the other thing I'm not happy with when the gunsmith put my sights on. He put my uh, sight on backwards here, which kind of drives me crazy, and I've never bothered to change it. I don't know. Just kind of a, a cheap gun that I do fire occasionally. <coughs> um, as far as cleaning, uh, you know, you do have to clean these pretty well, and back when I first started, wasn't as much information. Um, and I heard somebody put them in dishwasher. I have actually done that uh, several times. Take the barrel apart, uh, take the nipple off and stick them in the dishwasher on high and high heat drying and it actually works pretty well you, um, getting all the the powder off of it maybe not on the inside as much as I thought but uh, it certainly never hurt the gun at all uh, they've all been through it except for my pistol for whatever reason um, the best way though is a bucket of soapy water take the nipple off uh, stick I stick this end in and I take a shotgun swab uh, and run down the barrel and suck the water, soapy water through here. I do it until the water comes out clean. Um, then I uh, run uh, some, several patches through it, dry the water, then I re-oil them. 
And then the next step is that after oiling them, say I want to go out and shoot them again. Of course, I still got oil in there. So I fire three, four blank through it. I take a cap and fire through it, dry fire it with that cap to kind of burn off any oil that might be down in the breech area down here. And in doing so, I've never had a, a misfire. Uh, not too many misfires. Seems like the misfires I've ever had is because I just didn't seat it. Uh, the powder down right with the ball uh, little trick that I do some people may disagree with it but uh, I load the gun when I'm hunting uh, I normally use the more common uh, smokeless powder not rifle powder but Pyrex I guess and um, that I, I have had some issues with with that a few times not very often uh, pretty rare but just for safety because I've never had a problem with the black powder is I'll unscrew this nipple back it out and I'll take just a tad bit of black powder maybe uh, you know four pieces maybe very little and I will put down the nipple hole I'll reseat the nipple on top of it so that way when I get a good spark the black powder will ignite first it takes a little more heat to ignite the other powder is why the black powder will uh, ignite a little easier uh, it's not so much that it affects my accuracy at all, but it will sure guarantee me to have a good fire uh, and no misfires or a delayed fire. I don't know that I've ever had a delayed fire, but I can see where it could certainly happen. Um, other than that, folks, I uh, guess that's about it. Uh, safe shooting. Uh, I, I really enjoy these. I've not shot some of the new modern fire uh, black powders. Uh, would like to have one I don't know just never have gotten into it yet um, anyway uh, hope this helps like I said safe shooting and hope somebody found some of this information helpful thank you